آؤزبلّہشیدانجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الندینہ ہند اللہ الاسلام صدق اللہ العظیم ربش رحلی صدری و یسر علی عمری وحل العقد تم لسانی یفقہ ہو قولی رسپیکٹڈ ویورز اینڈ لسنرز السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ دا ورس وچ آئی ہیو ریسائٹیڈ از فرام سورا البقارہ چیپٹر نمبر ٹو ورس ہنڈریڈ اینڈ ٹوینٹی اللہ سیز ان دین عند اللہ السلام دا ریلیجن وچ از گوئنگ ٹو بی ایکسپٹیڈ ان دا سائٹ آف اللہ از اسلام دا ریزن وائی ہیو کوٹیڈ دس ورس اور سیگمنٹ یو سی وی ہیو ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ فرسٹ سم ٹرمینالوجیز ان اسلام اینڈ دین آئی ول کم ٹو مائی مین ٹاپک فرسٹ آف آل وٹ از اسلام اٹ مینس پیس with the total submission to Allah's will, God's will. And beside that, all the fundamental principles and philosophies, we bring them together inside it. And it is called Deen, the way of life. This is what Islam is. Islam is par excellence. It is not just rites and rituals, as all of the religions they claim. Islam is the total socio politico economic system together and we call it deen it has rites and rituals plus all the qualities of way of life no other religion claims that other than islam and regarding rites and rituals we have one word we call a madhab and we do not find this in quran as far as my knowledge has been concerned I don't think so it's also to be found in a hadith. But I am not sure about that. I'm not the scholar of a hadith or expert. There are so many hadiths and I can never claim, nobody can ever claim like he's totally versed to understand them all. So for my knowledge so far, I don't think so the word has been uttered once. The only system we understand is deen, way of life. how to do things in social laws, political laws, and economical laws. Now, this is the terminology. Now, coming to other words we have in Islam, you see one word, we call it sect. S-E-C-T, firqa in Arabic, you can call it. It means when something is there, a notion in one of the groups, and it is diverting away from Islam, We call it a sect, meaning you are different, I am different. <clears throat> Then we have also the school of thoughts. And many people, they get confused or mix these things together. Like Imam Shafi'i, Imam Hanbali, Imam Abu Hanifa, Rahimullah, all of them, they mix their fiqh or fiqh, we call it jurisprudence, jurisprudent laws. which we call it analogical induction to analogical deduction, qiyas. This all field, they mix up and they call it firqa, a sect, which is wrong. That's not a sect. These are different school of thoughts and all comes in one ahl sunnah wal jama'ah. This is a terminology which Prophet ﷺ used by himself. Me and my people, ahl of sunnah wal jama'ah, are the people who, whose faces will be brightened on the day of judgment. And this is not my words. This is the tafsir, <coughs> Ibn Kathir. If you read Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, verse 115 onwards and 14, you will see the interpretation that on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, there will be people whose faces will be brightened like white, something flash, something beautiful. And those people will be from my Ahl Sunnah Al-Jama'ah. And Prophet said that, We are sitting like that. Whosoever follows us, the way we are dealing Islam, those people will call my jama'at. So some people say that, you know, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'at is not mentioned anywhere. Prophet never said we are Muslims. Yes, we are Muslims. We are Muslims towards or against the disbelievers. Allah says in the Quran, when these kuffar do not believe in you, tell them we are Muslims. If they turn away, tell them we are Muslims. This is against the kuffar, not against in our own understanding of our jama'at. We have to say, Ahl-e-Sunnah wal-Jama'at, to tell the people 
that we are the jama'ah of orthodox, the jama'ah which Prophet and Sahaba and they all understood simultaneously. And why it's important, I will tell you later on. Because nowadays, any Tom, Dick and Harry claims that I'm Muslim. And when you start scratching, his ideologies are atheistic, skeptics, Qadianis, Ahmadis. These people claim that, which is my topic today. These people claim that we are Muslims. It doesn't prove anything. Every person who, claim, who just reads Shahada doesn't become a Muslim. He is reading Shahada and inside his heart, he's believing that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad is also Muhammad. Na'uzubillah, astaghfirullah. So we cannot accept these kind of things. Clarify yourself. So this is what the point is. Sect means something you are different and you are going away and you have some differences between the fundamentals or non-fundamental points in Islam. And maybe you are honest. We cannot give fatwa on your, on your batin. Maybe you are honest. We cannot give fatwa on batin, whatever in your hearts. Maybe you are honest and in after honesty, you are preaching and you created your own sects. I don't want to call what are those sects, it's not my business, but this is the point I'm explaining to you. So understand these terminologies. Don't ask that who is uh, the sect in front of you. I will not tell, I don't care about these things. Allah knows the hearts of people as long as they are not doing shirk, as long as they're not associating partners with Allah, then we can discuss and have a debate. Otherwise, nobody is a child. Nobody is a baby. He knows. Everyone knows who is God and everybody knows that no, no, nobody can protect him or anyone except Allah. Simple. We don't need to just, you know, start scratching these values anymore. Second, the, I already explained the second point, like schools of thoughts. And we have different schools and schools are created through the system. We call it Qiyas and then we have Ijma. Quran, Sunnah. Sunnah means the right hadith, the authentic hadith of Prophet ﷺ. Then we have Ijma, the consensus of scholars, how much they agree, what is the momentum, where the momentum lies, we follow that. And if they are wrong in their concepts, Allah will forgive them if they are honest. People will not be asked and questions on that. But people should also strive and struggle to find the truth. But do not you know, object the scholars and do not disrespect them by having this concept that they are, they know nothing, we know everything. You don't know, maybe out of courtesy you are doing something, but you do not know, maybe the, or the scholar, he's honest, and this is what he thinks, and he's honest uh, in front of you or whatever inside his heart, so you cannot judge and give fatwa on that. So, this is the system we have it, so whatever the majority of ulamas, they agree, we follow that. Then the fourth is the section we call it Qiyas. In English, I can explain is analogical induction or analogical deduction. To induce and deduce. You have some points coming in front of you, a question comes, a query. And then after that, you have to say, uh, make a whole, uh, you know, round on Quran, then Hadith, then Ijma. And after that, you still uh, having something not clear then the guy who is expert, not every Tom, Dick and Harry, who has the knowledge of Hadith, science of Hadith, philosophy of Quran, philosophy of Hadith, and his history of Islam, he should also have the knowledge of all the Sahaba and the historians and whatever, whatever etc. After that, he must analyze, compute all that data. And then at last, he will finalize it and give his verdict. That becomes his ishtihad. And that we call it Qiyas, analogical induction to deduction. He deduce it by inducing all the values and give it to you. And then we take it that point. So these things created the school of thoughts. So we respect all those ulamas, all those, you know, uh, fik, fik, fiki issues. We respect them, we follow them. And we do not want to make issues on that. And this is what we call schools of thoughts. We should respect that. Now, sects, clear, totally different. You are different, I am different. And if they are honest with one another, Allah knows what the judgment will fall on them. But there is also another category. Rather, I call it, it's not even a sect. 
it's not even what to call school of thoughts i call it it is a cult c u l t and cult today i realize it's not even a cult which the my topic is going to start actually i call it it is a monetary mafia yes monetary mafia and i will elaborate my points why i'm talking about none other than love for all and hatred for none i hope you get this slogan or a slang i rather call it slang not a slogan love for all hatred for none qadianis ahmadis lajna communities all this thing all these cancerous elements i call them not even a cult now it's a monetary mafia everything lies on this mafia is about money the poor people in rabwa in pakistan unfortunately and in qadian these poor people are being flim flammed hoodwinked subterfuged bamboozled and this thing has been going on for many many years there is no truth in all of this mafia is cult why there is no truth you see the western people whom they have created a nest and you know creating those eggs there you know hatching those eggs there and these people they do not know the true faces of qadianis ahmadis they think that they are very a fable nice softy you know peace loving religion and islam they think them they think that they are the true representative of islam and muslims and we all are fanatics <coughs> you see these christians who are accommodating these people they have no realization that mirza gulam ahmed the founder of this mafia cult this guy has been abusing and belittling jesus christ they don't know because the language the lewd language the gutter language of bombay this guy used in his books who will catch the joke you will expect these people to catch the joke the western people they don't understand what is randi they don't understand the implication of this word the sophistication of this word the integral value of this word the etymology of this word they will not understand that and they are not likely to understand that because they themselves are in mire they are themselves drowning man clutches at straw drowning women do the same they themselves don't know what is right or wrong about this christianity what they going to sift out these qadianis so imagine that be fooling those people taking unfair advantage by taking political asylum land of domicile and acting like a cherubims like angels like little babies that we are persecuted people pakistan persecutes us what about you people going and sneaking there in pakistan and preaching sending droves after droves your lajna women community and then pretending like innocent doves when you get caught up so these games you think that people do not know this is our strength of ulamas in pakistan khatb an nabuwat forums alhamdulillah that we do not let you guys even move your hair and this is our alhamdulillah strength and potential may allah always keep this up and remember that i always tell in my videos the day when khilafat al alam min haji an nabuwa will come i'm telling you you guys will be disappeared from this planet i think so not even the solar system will accept you outer solar system will not even accept you i think so this whole universe around 165 billion light years in radius and diameter they will not even accept you i'm telling you the day wait every dog has its day <clears throat> allah says in the quran that allah doesn't punish people like that he gives respect but when the time is up faqti'a dabirul qaumil ladina zalamu 
Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin. Then their last remnant were to be cut off. Then the people who are devoted to God by true hearts, they will say, Allah, there are shukar that you have eradicated these evil mongers. This is your destination will be inshallah. And the time is very near. Mouth, death. And this death, last remnant will not be spared. This is the promise of Allah. You work, do your work niggardly. Time will come to you. It's a matter of time. People think, they think that, you know, after a lot of persecution, look, we are still surviving. So we are on haq. These are all dilemmas. These are all, you know, good. As a placebo effect, you take a pill. It's just like a good for a time being satisfaction or complacency. But in reality, every Qadiani knows that he's a liar. He's a munafiq. He is confused. He's suffering from cognitive dissonance, confusion, dichotomy, dilemma, and ambiguous concepts and ideologies. He knows very well the fool and the monkey made by their jamaat. Now they are stuck. They are in the whirlpool or whirlwind. What can we do? They try to do something. The mafia comes and abduct their families. If they don't pay taxes, if they don't pay <laughs> money to this guy in Germany, the covered person, I, have, I never see any covered person like him who represents any religious party, you know, never. That guy, Mirza Masroor, there in Germany. What is the purpose to collect Mercedes, Benz, keep collecting cars, houses? What is your goal? I'm asking, what is your goal? What is your roadmap? What is your agenda? What is your modus operandi? This is your modus operandi to give donation to one guy who's sitting in Germany and eating and taking unfair advantage of you people in Pakistan who is already surviving on a ventilator. The way we are behaving, our financial system is already on ventilator. You are taking money from those poor people and enjoying their luxury life in your luxury cars. Is this what the role of Imam Mahdi? Is this the role of Khalifas? Is it what the Khalifa will do when he will come or supposed to do? Think, can't you see it's a monetary mafia? He is eating your money. You should wake up, guys. Ask him question. Tell him to confront Muslims or ulama. Tell him to come out from his bill and confront those people from his cave. It's not even cave, it's a cavern. It's a big cave he's living there now, enjoying with all this fortification, putting guards there. And I bet you that he cannot even sleep. He's not even sleeping properly, I'm telling you. He must be suffering from insomnia. He must be suffering from many kind of, you know, mental diseases. Because people like them, narcissistic people, they don't care about anybody. You talk too much, they will abduct you. Now look at the poor people. Many of them wanted to come back to Islam, but they're afraid. They take their, you know, properties, confiscation, then confiscate their property. Then their children are being hammered down or under the stake. They abduct them. They threaten them. They blackmail them. And even the legal bodies, they don't do anything. And at the end, those poor by helpless people, they keep the Islam in their hearts. They become Muslim, but all of their life they spend like that. I know. Any sensible person can never accept that a guy became married, a woman, impregnated himself or herself. I don't know what pronoun should I use as a reflexive pronoun. And then after that, after nine months, full gestation period, three trimesters, the baby is coming out and that baby is Jesus himself. And he's the man himself, he's the Maryam himself, and he's everything himself. He's Kalki Otar, he's Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Astaghfirullah, he's everyone, he's angel, even he's God. And people said that he's Haq, he's Imam Mahdi, he was supposed to come, he's Jesus Christ supposed to come. Are you lunatics? Your mind, what happened to your minds? How can someone be this much brainwashed and programmed? This is something strange. People should study your brains. Like these active debaters, Qadiani's debaters, they should be brought in some kind of laboratories and they should be, and their brains should be tested. And I'm telling you, their IQ will be more than Einstein because they do not belong to this earth. They belong to some somewhere, I think so from hell. 
their mind coming from hell a simplest thing man you are creating conundrums after conundrums guy is simple jesus christ is a jew imam mahdi is from arabs you brought that man from india and lumped up all these ideology in him and produce the final production the bogus production coming out of from the batch and this is your production after so much efforts as a shame on you disgrace on you and shame on your apologetics your debaters are useless they cannot even read quran they are nothing bogus just monetary system monetary mafia cult keep earning money after money get the chanda 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 and then somebody doesn't give you chanda guys remember one thing and i'm going to end with this any jamaat any cult any system of religion i'm talking in religion it applies to every religion on planet if the religion is backing up its ideology on the grounds of money that religion is not correct remember that there is something fishy if you are minting money from some particular emotional values and ecstasy and euphoria you brainwash people and tell them to give money because god will not give you something you're going to hell or you're going to heaven just give me money and from that money everything will be all right that is the most dangerous concept be away from that islam doesn't preach that my western brothers and sisters who are accommodating these people out of courtesy out of ignorance please islam doesn't go like that islam has a zakat system on the grounds of 85 grams of gold per lunar calendar of year in the saving amount then you have to pay zakat you are eligible beside that you cannot force anyone to give 1 real 1 dollar 1 rupees or 1 pound sterling not allowed in islam not acceptable in islam this is all games which the pastors played like jim jones remember 911 people committed suicide with cyanide poison and acid when they when he was caught up by the fbi and monetary people that he was minting and stashing lot of money in his bank when he gets caught up he let all the people committed collective suicide and you know that what happens how the cult was ended this is what exactly like that brainwash people by the name of religion move their emotions emotion is the biggest power you know that people are being moved from emotions you can do play with people's emotions and you can get anything you want i'm telling you anything you want you can get it if you play with people's emotions